How may I be of assistance to you, Padawan? What is it you would like to speak to me about? After my father died, my mother was left to support me alone. A single, non-human woman, living in one of the worst, most violent slums on Terrace. It was not easy for her. When my father was killed, it seemed that something in her began to die as well. She worked. She worked as hard as she was able. But over time, she began to waste away. I later learned that she was unable to get enough money to feed both of us, and had to start borrowing from the exchange. A band of cutthroats and smugglers. But even that was not enough. She hid what she was doing from me. She gave most of her food to me so that I would be strong, but she herself was suffering deeply from it. In the end, she could go on no longer, and collapsed at the cantina where she worked one day. She never recovered. There was nothing really that I could do for her. She left me no money, and no doctor would see her without being paid first. I sat by her bed for days as she lay there dying. I never want that to happen to someone I care about ever again. But there was still the money she had borrowed. She had never paid it back and made no provisions for her death. You must understand, the exchange is brutal. They care nothing for the life of a sentient being. They are the major suppliers of slaves on Terrace. They thought it would be appropriate that, with my mother owing them money, the debt should be passed on to me. And with no way to pay, they took me by force. You have no idea what it is like to be bound like a beast and treated as such. It was the worst time of my life. They treated me like livestock. They were waiting for a buyer to give them some credit for me when the Jedi came to fight the Mandalorians. Jedi could not abide by what they saw there, and drove the exchange from the face of the world, freeing those of us imprisoned there. But the Jedi soon left to fight their war, and I was left with a dream. I swore that I would become a Jedi. As soon as I had enough money to do it, I bought passage on a freighter headed for Dantooine, and we both know what has happened since then. I am grateful to you for having given me the opportunity to fulfill my dream, rather than become what I hated. Someday, I may make it up to you, but for now, let us keep on the task at hand. your kind doing here bad enough i have to deal with all these other idiots but now there's a stinking cathar on this world too i have as much right to be here as you do sir <laughs> yeah do like the jedi tells you and back off your people are pathetic it's no wonder we crushed your world so easily. What? What do you know about my world? I know enough that... Hey, wait a minute. You look familiar somehow. What? You? This doesn't concern you, Jedi trash. Hmm. Now where could I have... No, he's dead, and she likely is too. I... What are you talking about? Maybe I was wrong. Still, I think a specimen like you would be a nice addition to my collection. So, what would it take, Jedi, for you to sell your pet here to me? Now, don't be so selfish. We both know Cathair aren't real people anyway. The females make amusing pets, but the males should be put down like the animals they are. 
I remember one time on Taurus. What? What did you say? What did you do on Taurus, you scum? Put one of you down like the animals you are. So easy. Then I saw one of the females on the auction block. <sighs> but those darn Jedi. It was you. What? Me? Oh, oh, now I recognize where I've seen that face before. You were the little cath air I was going to purchase. But those Jedi came and stole my pet away from me. When I was fighting with the Mandalorians against the Cathair, I developed an appreciation for these creatures. They make excellent servants if properly trained. You Jedi act all prim and proper, but inside you must feel the same way I do about the lesser, non-human species. The Sith at least let their feelings show on the outside. You... the homeworld. Come now. Will you let your pet go? I'm sure we can come up with a price we both think is fair. And I will see you dead for what you have done to my people! Uh, hold on a second. D don't be hasty. There is peace. I... I will remain calm. I am a Jedi now. My lust for vengeance must be curbed. Yes! Yes! Say no to the dark side, but I will have you yet! Ha! Said I left the Jedi. Well, technically, I was only a Padawan. Not that that makes a difference to most, but as for the Order itself, no, I never left it. It left me. You know what I hate? Well, you know, lots of things really, but I'm old and easily annoyed, but that's besides the point. What I really hate are how most people view the Jedi. Everyone thinks that the Jedi are perfect, that they can do no wrong. They think the Jedi Council is completely incapable of injustice. <laughs> I guess you aren't as stupid as you sometimes act. No doubt you've been on the receiving end of Jedi justice at least once, eh? And I'm not even talking about how some of us fall to the dark side. No, that's plenty indication of our fallibility. But it's something else entirely. No, I'm talking about how more than often not, your average robe-wearing Jedi can try to do the right thing and still be completely wrong. <sighs> I suppose I'm not being very clear, am I? Come to think of it, I don't have to be clear. Someone my age is entitled to ramble, dammit! But for your sake, I'll try to explain. I'll tell you a little tale about a Jedi Master I once knew. Hortaf, I think. Or was it Hortoff? Ah, I can never get it straight. Where was I then? Oh, oh yes, Master Hortaf. He was a kindly old Jedi who meant well, but the most nearsighted thing in the core, I swear. He would walk into walls, knock over tables, mistake apprentices for rancor beasts, that sort of thing. And he was too proud to submit to proper treatment. Some used to counsel him in the urge to use the Force, Master Hordath. Allow the Force to see for you. But he refused to believe that his eyes were failing. He simply squinted more and more as the years went on. The other Jedi resignedly passing it off as the amusing quirk of a compassionate old man. So... One day a young Padawan meets Master Hordath in the courtyard and 
not knowing of his blindness, asks him for directions to the council. Quite sure of himself, Hordath gave the lad directions, which happened to lead back outside and away from the Enclave. The Padawan is confused, naturally, and he asks if Master Hordath is sure, and of course Master Hordath says that he is. The Padawan suggests that perhaps he should ask someone else, but the proud Hordath now feels insulted. He tells the Padawan to take the route he prescribed and no other. Rather dejectedly, the Padawan did as he was told, and so ended up leaving the Jedi Order forever. It was decided that the boy's fate was to leave the Order anyway, though whether that was out of respect for Hordath or because the boy went on to something else, well, we'll never know. No, no, both of them were from before my time. Well before the Sith Wars, even. The tale is about blindness, and I thought the point was clear. At any rate, you think about it. You're the one who asked why the Jedi left me, remember? Now let's get going. My feet are itching for a good run. My Cathar blood seethes at the thought of that man still running free. I cannot stand still while I think about it, but... But I will not give in to the dark side, either. He will pay for his crimes, though. He will most likely be following us. Me. If we could find him first, then he may not be able to set in motion whatever he has in store for us. Dictorship. They must have been waiting for us on the hyperspace route. We're caught in their tractor beam. Do you recognize the ship? It's the Leviathan. Saul Carrot's vessel. My own mentor. Admiral Kareth taught me everything I know about being a soldier. He was a legend in the Republic fleet, and a hero to me, until he betrayed us. When the Sith attacked my homeworld, the Leviathan, to Saul Kareth's flagship, was at the head of the fleet. My family was destroyed that day, and my wife died in the Sith bombardment. I'm not gonna do anything stupid. I mean, I won't throw our lives away in some mad quest for vengeance, but if I get a chance to kill Saul during our escape, nobody better get in our way. Talk of an escape is somewhat premature, don't you think? We don't even have a plan to get out of this mess yet. I'll admit, it won't be easy. Saul's no fool, and he won't underestimate us either. You can count on plenty of guards watching every move we make. Maybe Admiral Carruth doesn't know how many of us there are on board. We all have special talents. Talents we could exploit so that one of us could stage a rescue. We just have to figure out who has the best chance to avoid capture so they can come and rescue us later. It's a long shot, but it's our only hope. The Admiral will be watching the three of us far too closely for any plot involving you, me, or Karth to succeed. 
It's going to be up to one of the others to get us out of this. Well, if we're gonna pick someone to save our skins, we better do it quick. In another minute, we're gonna have Sith troops marching up our loading ramp. I don't think I could use my force powers to convince a whole squadron of troopers to let me go free, but maybe I can use it to get them to take me to a separate cell. They'll probably only leave a single guard to watch over an old man like me. I could use the force to convince the guard to set me free. Then, I could free the rest of you. Hold on. They're dragging us into the docking bridge. Bastila, Karth, and the crew have been taken prisoner as you ordered, Commander. Excellent. Have you searched the ship thoroughly? Admiral Karth warned me to be on alert for any kind of treachery. We found an old man in the back. I... I think we should keep him separate from the others for questioning. A strange request. And why do you think this old man should be segregated? I... I'm not sure, Commander. After speaking with him, I just... I, I just think we should question him away from the others. I... I agree, Commander. After speaking with the old man, I think we should question him away from the others. Very well. The Admiral is probably too busy to bother with this old man anyway. Take him to solitary confinement for interrogation. Report back to me if you learn anything. Garth, it has been far too long since we last spoke. I see the recent months have not been kind in your case. I barely recognized you. But I recognize you, Saul. I see your face every night, even as I promise myself I will kill you for what you did to my whole world. Did you learn nothing in your time under me? As a soldier, you should understand that casualties were unavoidable. This was an act of war. No, it was a cowardly act of betrayal. Your fleet bombed a civilian target into oblivion without warning or provocation, and the blood of those innocent people is on your hands. In war, even the innocent must die. The Sith would not accept me until I proved I had truly turned my back on the Republic by bombing the planet. My wife died in that attack, Saul. And for that, I swear I'll kill you. You used to be a man of action, not of empty words. Cling to your lust for revenge if you must, but spare me your tired threats. I've heard them all before. You're an insignificant part of these events anyway. Lord Malak is far more interested in your Jedi companions. He has great plans for them. We will never serve Malak or the Dark Side. The Sith will be destroyed, Admiral Karath, as will you if you don't turn away from this path. Your words are brave, Bastila, but the lure of the Dark Side is hard to resist. Or so I've been told. I wonder if your companion is as devoted to the light as you are. You're defiant. I'm certain Malak will find your loyalty to the Jedi amusing. The Dark Lord would probably reward me if I just killed you once and for all, but he may want to question you given the trouble you've caused him and the history between you. You mean... Oh, this can't be true, can it? You really don't know what's going on here, do you? Well, I won't be the one to deprive Malik of the pleasure of telling you himself. The Dark Lord will no doubt torture you for information and for his own twisted pleasure. Eventually, you will tell him everything. The Sith can be very persuasive. However, Lord Malik is in another sector. It may be some time before he arrives, so I suppose I will have to fill in for him until then. Activate the torture fields. Ah! Enough. I don't want them to pass out before I question them. Malik will appreciate any information I can give him when he arrives. Don't waste your breath, Saul. We won't answer any of your questions. I'm sure you won't. However, we both know your friend's loyalties have proven in the past to be somewhat flexible. I am interrogating you, not the other way around. You will answer questions, not ask them. It is time to put your loyalty to the test. I doubt torturing you will gain me your true cooperation. Your will is too strong to be broken that way. However, even the strongest of heroes has trouble watching those they care about suffering. The interrogation will begin now. Each time you refuse to answer or give me a false answer, Karth will suffer. My pain is meaningless. Tell him nothing. I tire of these games. Now I want answers. On what planet is the Jedi Academy at which you were trained? Mm -hmm. 
Alderaan is nothing but a planet of artisans and philosophers. There is no training academy there. You must think this is a game. Very well, this is the price of your resistance. Ah! Enough! You see what happens when you try to defy me. This first question was a test. Obviously, Malak knew the academy was on Dantuin, and it has since been destroyed by our fleet. Dantuin is an empty graveyard now. Nothing is there but a smoking ruin and the charred remains of your former masters. More empty threats. We Sith prefer to let our actions speak for us. Perhaps that is why we are winning this war. Now, tell me your mission. How were the Jedi planning on using you to stop Lord Malak and our Sith Armada? Do you take me for a fool? The Jedi are not assassins. They would never devise such a plan. Perhaps you need a reminder of the consequences of refusing to cooperate. No! Oh, oh. ah! Listen, can you not hear him suffering? You can spare him further pain by simply answering my questions. Now I will ask again, on what mission did the Jedi Council send you? Perhaps another lesson is in order. No! Ah! Ah! No! I beg you! Mercy! No! I am surprised he did not pass out sooner. Rarely have I seen someone withstand such punishment and remain conscious. I see I am wasting my time here. When Malak arrives, you will learn my interrogation techniques are considered merciful among the Sith. I will leave you here in your cell with a small taste of the horrors you will suffer when Lord Malak arrives. <laughs> Don't try to move too quickly. You might not be fully recovered yet. Admiral Gareth had his guards continue to torture you even after you passed out. They tortured all of us, though you got the worst of it by far. Saul wanted them to make us suffer. He's become some sort of sadistic monster. The dark side has perverted him, Garth. Once you start down the tainted path, it leads you ever further into the depths of evil. I fear he is forever lost. Yes. I suppose you're correct. Sometimes it's easy to lose sight of that hope in the face of such unbridled cruelty. But you speak the truth. I suppose I'm taking the news of Dantooine's destruction quite hard. First Taurus, now the Academy. Is there no end to the killing? I'd like to believe that Saul was lying to us. But even as he said the words, I knew they were true. The Academy is gone. We should have felt a disturbance in the Force when the attack came. The fact that we did not is a bad sign. I fear the dark side is growing stronger. Casting shadows our vision cannot pierce. I can only hope that some of the Jedi escaped. Brook, Endar, Saar. I cannot imagine all of them being gone. In any case, we've lost our one place of refuge in the galaxy. None of this will matter if we don't get out of this prison before Saw gets back. Saul mentioned that Lord Malak was on his way. I think the Admiral left to prepare for his arrival, and to report the results of our interrogation. It is fortunate you were able to resist the Admiral's questioning. The fate of the galaxy could be changed by revealing the slightest piece of vital information. I, uh, I have to confess something. There was a, there was a moment, just a moment, when part of me was hoping that you would tell him what he wanted to know, just to make the horrible pain stop. I've known Admiral Kareth a long time, and I think you're right. The interrogation was a sham. Saul was toying with us. He didn't care what we told him. I think it was just an excuse to torture us before Malak arrived. Did you feel that? A disturbance in the Force. The Admiral has sent his message. The Dark Lord knows we're here now. Malak is coming. Well, then we better hope Jolie busts us out of here before he arrives. God, I need to speak with you. What do you want, old man? You better not be trying to cause any trouble, or you'll be sorry. The cell is too drafty. My old bones could catch a chill in here. We don't want that. You better let me out. Ah, uh, yes, it's too drafty in there. Your old bones might catch a chill. We don't want that. Get out of there. You shouldn't have let me out, Sonny. That was wrong. Admiral Kareth won't be too happy with you disobeying his orders. Yes. 
What I did was wrong. Very wrong. You deserve to be locked up in the cell for disobeying orders. Yes, I deserve to be locked up for disobeying orders. Then I'll be sure to never let you out. Goodbye, Sonny. Ciao, Basso. Gino Molirani Lubo Tokimba Loco Net. Tongi Tuama Aki Inkotune. Or Tongi Tuama Ji Aki Inkotun. Tong pa no kun, no nek. Chiwi aita ka chok jiska do soki. Kopa bono nakachu. Labora na winki smak toma. Kuyami ju chas kronki to patslimo. Chi ita kanki chan na kilikun. Kimba muli radwa. Nikawa dubaka. Patisa, patisa. Kon muli slimo poi wanga kun viskin. Ichuta, yun patisa, kimba ni chalora kun. Smilia, tinguin ko ka, patoga yak fuli ko. Chiwi aita ka chong chicha, agi inko tune, chuna muli ra, tangi wama jiko na. Smilia, tinguin ko ka, patoga yak fuli ko kala ji. ひるらこんきんとんひとままあきんとんひままじあきんことんかちょぱぼろしょんこたちちゃうんちゃわウィスコちわえあいたかんきじよかくうばばすかどわなちちょぱもすかかきんちゃなわばかはわ Yun patisa, chiwa e aita kanki. ちわえあいたかわよんレッツシーチョバソジノモリラニブボトンキンバノコネクサトンヒトママアキンコトゥネオトンヒママジアキンコトゥトンパノコンノネクチウイアイタカトンチチャキムリラコンキン Kimba no konik dorcha. Jiska do soki, kopa bono nakachu. Labora na winki smak toma.
Well done, Jolie. I knew we could count on you. A Jedi never fails to get the task done. Now, if I remember the layout of the ship, our equipment should be in a storage chamber just through the north doors. After we grab our stuff, we need to get to the main bridge controls. The bridge is the only place that we can open the docking gates of the hangar where they've got the Ebon Hawk. We have to open those gates before we can fly out of here. We better get moving. I can feel the darkness of Malak's presence approaching, and I don't want to be here when he arrives. None of us is a match for the Sith Lord. Surprise and secrecy will serve us best. A small group might have a better chance of sneaking onto the bridge undetected while the others make their way down to the Ebon Hawk. Count me in, then. I've got a score to settle with the Admiral before we get off this ship. And I have a feeling I'm gonna find him on the Leviathan's bridge. That's true, Karth. You can come, but don't let your hatred of Saul Karath jeopardize our true mission, getting the Ebon Hawk safely off the Leviathan. You better come with me and Karth. The others can find their way on their own, but we might run into trouble. We'll need you and your powerful Force abilities to deal with it. The three of us will get our equipment and make our way to the bridge. The rest of you head down to the docking hangar where they've got the Ebon Hawk. You'll have to find a way to deal with the guards. Don't you worry about that. I know how to deal with the guards. They won't know what hit them. We'll meet you there as soon as we get those docking bay doors open. Just make sure the Hawk is ready to fly when we get there. And may the Force be with you. Andorus. We're at the Ebon Hawk. Like we figured, it's under heavy guard. But don't worry, we'll figure out a plan to take care of them. <laughs> 